I'm going to a little bit about the kidney crisis at the moment and teaching you how to be able to interpret narratives. It's important now because more than ever, science seems to have gone what we call completely woke in the sense that you can no longer call things as they are. You have to fit within a narrative. And therefore, what it means is that the scientific community is no longer objective. And I'm going to demonstrate to you through what's happening with regards to kidney disease to highlight what exactly I mean when I say that. And so the first thing you have to know is that I'm going to be focused on this paper here, Global, Regional and National Burden of Chronic Kidney Disease in Adults, 1990 to 2023. This is a 33 year trajectory. And what they've done is that they have covered the whole period of time looking at a global increase in kidney disease. Now, I think that this is what the word, it's selective information because they are giving the public the impression that kidney disease is rising year on year in a way that fits the normal trajectory. So my first question is, hold on, why have you not included the pandemic? Because it's like having a major war or something where millions of people died and you didn't acknowledge it and you only made reference to where things were. That doesn't make sense to me. That's an example of narrative science, in my view, because we've just had a pandemic. Why, if you're doing this analysis, would you not focus on the question specifically about COVID-19? So here is what happened. When you look at it, they're talking about common um, uh, chronic kidney disease, leading cause of mortality. They're looking at that in globally in 2023, 788 million people. This is a global rise over since 1990. Here is the first mention of COVID. It says the population affected by CKD is orders of magnitude higher than that of kidney replacement therapy. Since the majority of people with chronic kidney disease experience mortality due to cardiovascular disease, acute kidney injury, and infectious causes, including COVID-19, before reaching kidney failure. So that's the first mention. The second mention of it in terms of the paper of the document is right in the conclusion. And what they say here is that finally, comparison of trends are valid within uh, the GBD analysis, global um, analysis, but not between reports that use different standard populations and major world events, including conflicts and COVID-19 were not analyzed. Now, as I said, what you're going to hear is that kidney disease has just been rising. Yes, there was a pandemic, but you know, uh, it's not too relevant. The reason why you will hear that is because if there is a change in trajectory of kidney disease, the first question is, is it because of COVID? One, is it because of the elephant? Two, is it the combination? Three, those are the three questions that you should ask. Now, if you don't want people to think about that, you don't mention it. And this is what I would challenge the authors on is that you didn't even mention it really twice in the paper, but you haven't made any acknowledgement for whether or not there was a change in the context of COVID-19. Now, you have to remember something that in the relationship of the pandemic and comorbidities that increased risk, kidney disease was at one of the highest levels. If you had kidney disease, you were at significant risk for severe COVID and possibly mortality. So within the millions who died from severe COVID-19, a significant proportion of them would have kidney disease. Now, 
they wouldn't suddenly have reaccumulated numbers unless there was a lot more kidney disease occurring during the pandemic. Now, this is a very important point, very important nuance. So let's break it down a little bit more and so that you can understand. So I went through the headache of trying to get this in some kind of order. So this is what it would look like. And this image I'm going to show you will show you the trend up to about 2019 and what happened after 2019, 2020 into the pandemic and beyond. And so here is what it looks like. You can see all the way from 1990 here, traveling up, the red dotted line represents the trajectory up to about 2019. This is the trajectory over that time. You can see that there is a slight increase from about 2015, but then come here, 2019, 2020, this goes off the chart. Now, as I told you, in the pandemic, a lot of people would have died with kidney disease. Now, we do know that severe COVID is associated with kidney damage as well. And so we expect that in 2020. But beyond 2021, remember the world was protected by vaccines, especially in highly vaccinated countries. So we should see a stabilization or even a fall off in terms of the numbers. So I then went a little bit further with regards to what it is that we are seeing. And I thought, well, there was a slight change in 2015. What would happen if I took the trend of chronic kidney disease from 2015 to 2019 and looked at what the current trend is from the pandemic period. And when I did that, this is what I came up with. So it would look something like this, where the yellow dotted line is the pre-pandemic period here, and the post-pandemic trend from 2019 to 2023, this is what it looks like. This is significant, but it's a still a little bit hard to read. So I thought again, okay, why don't I try and get the trends superimposed on each other so that it shows a clearer idea as to what this would look like if the current trend of chronic kidney disease was running parallel to the trend in 2015 to 2019. And this is what it looks like. So here you are seeing in red, this is the post-pandemic trajectory. This is the pre-pandemic trajectory, which was an increase in any case from the 1990 to 2020, um, 2015. So this is a slight increase from 2015, but look at what happens post-2019. An extra 34 million cases of chronic kidney disease. This is significant. Why in the world would they have not included this in their analysis? And this is what I'm saying about narrative science. What you have to realize is that nobody wants to talk about the elephant in the room because you can't get published. If, if they dared to try and put that in, I, I guarantee you they would, get, they would struggle to get it published in The Lancet. And let me just be clear here. It's not a criticism of the authors because I understand that in order to get an article or paper published in a major journal, you have to follow the narrative. There's so many other papers they can choose from. And so if there is even the slightest question where editors will be challenged and they may have to retract papers, they will not bother. And so the only science that can get through is selective narrative science, not science that actually challenges and calls us to look more deeply at what is going on. So the big question that should be considered is why? Now, we know 
COVID causes kidney disease because it damages the kidneys, severe COVID. Now, here is the important point. As I said, in the pandemic, people with chronic kidney disease, a lot of them would have died. And so you would expect the numbers to go down. The fact that the trajectory is increasing post pandemic, when apparently COVID is no longer a problem, well, the only thing you're left with is the elephant in the room. So they're stuck. Either they acknowledge that the elephant didn't stop the circulation of COVID and it's still causing damage, or they acknowledge that the elephant is possibly a contributor to the worsening of the chronic kidney disease. Instead, they will say nothing, similar to what you saw with regards to this paper. They will just pretend this doesn't happen. It's not relevant. Nothing to see here. If you don't know about it, and if you are not asking questions about it, nobody cares. You will just have lovely papers talking about chronic diseases that are just increasing. It's because you're smoking, because you're overweight, you're not doing enough exercise. It will not address the questions that need to be asked with regards to the elephant in the room. I'll finish with this important point. And this is something that I will cover in more detail. At the moment, there is great hope and vision that artificial intelligence will be able to help healthcare to address chronic conditions. I will tell you categorically that if AI is trained on narrative science, it will not. It will get just as confused and follow a narrative that is not relevant to what is happening in terms of real world disease and pathology. And so in preparation for that, I am preparing to learn, teach AI, here is where you look. This is what you look for. Ignore the narrative. Help instead to dismantle it. Show where all the gaps are. Break it down so that it will force the scientific community to look carefully at the causes in front of them. Nobody wants to do it. But the reality is, science searches for truth. It doesn't care. It's not really interested in your opinion. It's interested in the facts. It's interested in the trajectory. And it should be interested in the causes for what is going on. Let us hope that narrative science gets broken very quickly. Because I tell you this much, when we think about the implications of this kind of trajectory, and remember, let's look at it again. If you leave this alone, and you don't understand it, and you don't mitigate it, the implications for the public are horrendous. That's why we have to call it out. Because if we don't do something, many people are going to suffer. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, look in the description below. Let's see if we can make more people see this and reach it and hopefully make a difference. There's a lot of work still to be done. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.